guys, Marty Schwartz here, GuitarJams.com. Oh God, it feels great to be back giving you guys another lesson. Uh, this one is a little more of a like a theory soloing concept for you. And the reason for that is because I just started running uh, my theory DVD set this week. It's on sale, you can click the link down there to check it out. But also, I'm gonna pick three comments from this video to win that set. And then I'm also gonna leave a jam track on my other YouTube channel, and I'm gonna pick three comments from that to win the DVD set as well, my Theory DVD set. So what I'm gonna give you right now is a really cool concept that uh, I've learned, and you know, my uh, buddy Bob Ryan uses this, I've heard guys like John Schofield use it, um, including a ton of rock guys. Um, and we're gonna zoom in, and we're gonna check it out. So here we go. All right, so the progression that I was jamming over was a D minor seven chord to a G major chord or a G seven, but not G minor. You know, just kind of a standard thing. You know, you see that in a lot of different kinds of songs. Santana to Guns N' Roses. Um, and your first approach as a soloist would be to, you know, look at that first chord, which is D minor, and you could just plug in your D minor pentatonic scale, as much as, as much of it as you know, maybe you only know the one spot, or you know it up and down the whole neck. You know, you got your little bag of tricks for D minor. Maybe you know some modal stuff, maybe you don't, but here is an awesome little trick. And it, it's kind of considered modal, but you don't necessarily have to think about it that way. Check out what I'm just gonna play uh, something real quick here. Listen to this. Okay, so what I did there, it just still, you know, it all just fit, right? But what I did was in my mind, in my mind's eye, I thought C major, C major licks. And that is a modal concept, and that is really what theory is, is just the how and the why things work, right? So this particular progression of D minor comes actually, it's derived, these chords actually come from the C major scale, the Do, Re, Mi of C. It's all those notes, but we're thinking of that second tone, the D, as the tonal center instead of the C now. So that's what a mode is, is switching it out. But all I did, even if I didn't know my modes inside and out and all this crazy theory, if you're playing a minor progression and that minor pentatonic, you can play the major a whole step below, like the straight up even the major pentatonic scale, which would be um, the C major pentatonic scale, which you can think of like this. which is also the same thing as the A minor pentatonic scale. So you could also, this brings up the thing that when you're playing a D minor progression, you could play some A minor licks, you could play some C major licks, and then mix in just that straight up D blues rock kind of thing as well. Let me show you a couple of these C major licks that I was playing that you, you traditionally hear over like a southern rock kind of thing, right? So let's say you had a progression like C to F. Classic lick would be, you know, you got your C root right here, 
you go up a whole step and you bend that up in that C major E country Almond Brothers kind of thing. <laughs> major sounding licks and in your mind you can still think of those exact same licks over that D minor progression and it just gives you a little different flavor and and it's the idea the the improvising part of it is that you can just throw it in there a little bit and then just go right back into your D minor blues licks so the first one was this whole step bend on the 10th fret and then you've also got a little box right here which you know, on the B string, you've got the 8 and 10. And then also you've got right here the uh, ninth fret of the G. Oops, sorry. That's all C major-y kind of stuff. I even did a little C major arpeggio right here. And then also up into this zone, which is really cool, is the uh, 13th fret on the B. That's just that C note again. Whole step up again. It's actually the same thing as this. Same thing. But on the B string, on the 15th fret, you can get your pinky right there on the 15th of the high E. So if I was playing that all over a C major kind of thing, And then also your classic, uh, you know, looks like your dis favorite pentatonic thing right here, A minor or C major pentatonic. And remember, that's not the D minor pentatonic, but it can be used like superimposed over over this D minor thing. And so I was doing kind of another kind of country majory kind of lick, you know, with this bend on the G string here on the seventh fret, and then you could do the um, the eighth fret on the B and high E, or separate. And once again, you can hear that that's all real C major-y sounding stuff. Another thing I threw in too was just the classic. which is as C major sounding as it gets. And I'm only playing the G and the high E, so you've got 9th fret and the 8th fret, then both on the 10th, and then both on the 10th, I mean both on the 12th. All C major sounding, right? So now let's just talk about that D minor pentatonic, that straight power zone that most of you are hopefully already working on, right? You know, D blue scale right there, the run. So that's your power, your power zone. But then look at some of those C major licks I just talked about and throw them in there and all of a sudden you have like a different sound to go to. You didn't really have to learn anything new. And the theory set that I actually have for sale too covers tons of these concepts but from the very beginning. You know, I act, in the set I act like you don't know a thing about theory and we start ground level and just work our way up all the way to concepts like this which I, I approach in a real uh, logical kind of like real world application uh, okay so watch I'm gonna play the, the jam track and I'm gonna first just play all the C major licks I showed you and then I'm gonna mix and match with the D just the straight D rock kind of stuff <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm gonna mix and match. Just knowing uh, the chords of a key can really open up lots of different melodic options when you're improvising as opposed to just always plugging in a pentatonic scale or even uh, knowing the modes. You know, this is a whole nother way to approach it as well. So the basic uh, formula of this lesson is a D minor progression you can play as if you're playing over C major to give a little different sound. And what it really does is kind of emphasizes um, some different tones than in the pentatonic. Uh, so it's a way to change the way you're thinking uh, to get some different sounds. So that's the basic gist of it. You can go to my Guitar Jams channel on YouTube and you're gonna see a jam track on there and you can uh, practice a bunch of these ideas. All right, that was it. Hopefully that helps add some new dimension to your playing. Uh, remember, you can leave a comment to win that theory set that's right down there. I uh, appreciate the support so much, you guys, and uh, I promise I'll see you in another video lesson real soon. Take care.